Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Tom Pop featuring Fat Man Little Boy. My name is Stephen Corkum. One. And we are here to talk about Spider-Man, Spider-Man, Far From Home, React to Spider-Man. Spider-Man, Far From Home, the latest installment of the new uh, Sony attempt at the Spider-Man franchise, the third attempt, that is, uh, the one with Tom Holland taking the lead as Peter Parker, a.k.a. Spider-Man, and uh, this is also considered to be uh, the final movie in the big Marvel Phase 4 project from the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and there were definitely undertones of, of that uh, throughout the movie. Uh, so let's first just let's start with the basics about this movie. Did we like it one did you like it yes like the, like a lot yes i liked it a lot too i did too it was it was actually a really good movie it was fun mm -hmm. it was funny uh it, it was, it, there, were, there were clever twists i thought uh i thought ev the casting was good everyone that it just it was just a s solid all around mm -hmm. there i've I, really is that what it is yeah. is that what it is yeah, what? i'm trying to start my engine when are you trying to start your engine? I'm old, dude. Dude, it's like almost one o'clock. Three o'clock's my good time. Dude, yeah, come on. I'm trying to. Ah, oh. well, I mean, listen. A lot of people, actually, I've I've read and and heard some other uh, uh, reviews and stuff like that. People are, are comparing this movie to Iron Man three in the sense that Iron Man three was more a Tony Stark movie than it was an Iron Man movie, and. And Far From Home is more a Peter Parker movie than a Spider-Man movie. When was Spider-Man ever not about Peter Parker trying to deal with the fact that he has powers? No, but what I'm trying to say is, like, we saw more Peter Parker on the screen than we did Spider-Man. In Iron Man 3, we saw more Tony Stark than we did Iron Man. Sure, and you figure that in real life, the characters are probably themselves more than the other superhero alter ego. Okay. That's fucking stupid. Who said that? That's stupid. I, I've heard that in a couple things. Right, so they're stupid. Okay. They're stupid things. Well, whatever. I I enjoyed Far From Home. Um, and uh, you enjoyed Far From Home. What about Mysterio? Did you like Mysterio Jake Gyllenhaal was... I was surprised. I thought he was going to be terrible. Uh, I, think, I think he's a great actor. Yeah. But uh, I, I liked Prince of Persia. Just I, got, I'm putting it out there. Sorry. I, I think in that role, I thought that he was going to be bad. I mean, I was interested to see how they were going to take on the role of Mysterio because Mysterio clearly, you know, even though he's an iconic Spider-Man villain, uh, he was never really like you know, his power set was based on he, he, he's the, the origin of Mysterio guys in the in the comics. He's a failed special effects like uh, a movie guy in, in Hollywood or, and makes making movies and doing special effects and he decides to take his talents at, at creating special effects and illusions to rob banks and do stuff like that. So I was like, well, how are they going to really, you know, translate that to the screen? Um, and we were led to believe that Mysterio is actually a real hero from an alternate u uh, universe, uh, alternate Earth, uh, with almost Doctor Strange-like powers. Yeah. So going into it, I don't know about you, but I really thought that he was going to be just another like Sorcerer Supreme, but yeah. of that earth. And the illusions that we thought were just uh, practical ma practical effects uh, for movie making were actually – it was real magic that he applied. That's what I thought it was going to be. You? Um, I thought he was from another dimension. I mean we all we saw it in the previews, absolutely. Uh, my, Spoilers, kids. Uh, I thought he was from a dimension, but uh... – He's not. I, I knew that yeah. he was. That there was an illusion in there somewhere, right? Because that's who Mysterio is. Yeah. Um. But I did not think that the whole other dimension thing was an illusion, because there there's two things that bother me about the movie. What's that? Uh, the minor thing that has to deal with this issue is uh, him calling it Earth six one six. Why does that bother you? That's what it's called. Right, but that's what fooled me. Be, be, because they knew what we that, call it in the comics. Yeah. Oh, wow. Well, right? Yeah, yeah. Because it, it's kind of, I mean, is it, I guess that's the writer's way to trick, try to trick us, right? Yeah, yeah. It's because by saying Earth-616, automatically we're like, well, he has to, there has to be multiple dimensions, because why the fuck on Earth would you call Earth-616 when that's what it is in the comics? I mean... Everything dealing with other dimensions deals, right? Coincidence. No, that's, that's the writer's... Yeah, yeah. Like, that's unfair. 
So yeah, I was tricked, but of course I was tricked. What's the other thing you didn't like? We'll talk about that later. Oh, okay, fair so enough. The end credit scene. Uh, oh, oh, yeah, 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 for sure. Um, I loved Zendaya in this movie. Um, I wasn't a huge fan of her in the first one. I really had a problem with her being MJ, but not really being MJ. Like right. she has some other name entirely, but she just so happens to go by MJ. Right. I didn't care that she. W I didn't care that she wasn't an actress. I didn't care that she wasn't a redhead or anything like that. I just had a problem with like she wasn't Mary Jane. She right. was. Right. And this she was one, she else. was a lot more that right because she was um, a lot shyer. Yeah. Um, she was a lot more awkward. Yes. And uh, and the whole puppy love thing with Peter Parker developed in this movie really yeah. well. No, I like so it. I like in, it. In the first one, I think w where it rubbed me the wrong way, she came across as like street smart, like like running circles around Peter Parker. So it didn't really uh, match what yep. we've seen in the comics. Yeah. But uh, in this one, I think they kind of fixed her. And and now I'm I'm all for her being Mary Jane. Um. I, I never uh, had a well MJ. We uh, I forget no, what her I, real yeah. name is in the in the movie. But it, but it's, it's, it's not it's, Mary Jane, right. guys. But it is Mary Jane. I mean, in the first yeah. one, they didn't really say her name. She just said MJ, and everyone freaked the fuck out. No, she she had a name that oh, she okay, called by, yeah. but at the very end, like gotcha. she's like, just call me MJ. Yeah. yeah. And we were like, what? And, and so this one's really good because like it's it's really the spirit of MJ in the comics. So. Yeah, uh, well, with with the exception of she's not popular and she's not an actress and right, all that right. stuff like that, uh, and she's not but, a but she's got, not a she's not a damsel in distress right. either. Yeah, but they, they yeah. got a lot of the other things right about her. Yeah, so I, I just I liked her, man. I like I like this. Uh, versus the comics, uh, they, they made her a little smarter too. Like she figured out the same way Vulture figured out that Peter Parker is Spider Man. You know, like you know she she had a, she, she just. Pretty much put two and two together and figured it out. So. And, and it should be a lot easier. I think that maybe this is what this movie, the one thing this movie has done better than any other Marvel movie. Yeah. Is figuring out the secret identity when you're a fucking idiot about it. Yeah. For sure. Um, I, I love Ned or Gonky from the comics, guys. I liked him more this time. Yeah, I, I liked him in both books. I, I think his little uh, European relationship with his girlfriend that was, really was fun. cute, you know? That was fun. Uh, and I, I, you know, I, I mean, I don't know if you ever went on school trips, but I can relate to that. You go on the school trip and you get a little trip girlfriend, and then you mm -hmm. come home and you're like, all right, we're breaking up because <laughs> you're back to real life. Um, so um, uh, I, I still hate Flash Thompson. I hate him. Mm -hmm. Couldn't stand him. I just don't like it. They try to make us empathize with him with the whole parents thing, but I, I didn't. No, no I, I can't stand Flash Thompson. I would have rather grown up rich without parents. I didn't like the school chaperones in the movie. Uh, JB Smoove. The 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 white guy, the one that looks like Zachary name, Quinto. I him, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I thought it was Zachary Quinto for the longest until I looked at the credits at the end, and I was like, no, that's not Zachary Quinto, which is Spock, by the way. By the way, guys. Um, uh, but I couldn't stand that guy. He was yeah. just doofus. It's like, come on, man. You're you're a grown adult. Like, you you can't be that dumb, and you can't. There's no way parents would give you the I mean, responsibility now, to take yeah. kids across the country. No, he's that generation now that they're becoming teachers, and they're like, yeah. Oh, is it, okay. I could see it. <laughs> it's sad, but I could see it. Well, you would have kids, and you would deal with JB teachers. Smith so I don't know. Was kind of funny with yeah. the whole witches thing. The, no, he was okay. It was the other guy, the the Spock. And by the way, like, like, so I, I I did watch this movie a second time. You did, yeah. yes. I went to go see it in 3D with my children. Which you said the 3D experience was, was phenomenal. Was great, it was better. Yes, better to watch it that way. And the reason is because now that I knew certain things, I needed what to look for. Yeah. So like when he was putting on his uh, his glasses, the Edith glasses. Yes. JB Smooth was looking up articles about witches, witchcraft. So that was really funny. Okay. I didn't catch that, but all right. right you know, yeah, yeah, so. yeah. Uh, Tony Stark references throughout the entire fucking movie, by the way. Like, he is like the ghost over Peter Parker's, you know, shoulder, like the entire movie. Uh, if you guys didn't know, Tony Stark basically gives Peter Parker the glasses that Tony used to wear, which, guess what, guys, is an AI called Edith that gives him basically access to... Even in death, I... Something, I... Something, whatever, I don't know, yes. But, but... But whatever it is, it, it gives Peter Parker basically Stark, you know, mm -hmm. industries. And I guess the world governments and everyone doesn't care that Peter Parker controls a massive satellite filled with killer drones. You know, but hey. Maybe they don't know. Maybe they don't know. I mean, can do you really believe in in, in today's world and, and in the world of, you know, S.H.I.E.L.D. or post-S.H.I.E.L.D. that they wouldn't know? But sure, whatever. Yeah. Anyways. Um uh, Nick Fury and Maria Hill were in the movie throughout the entire thing pretty much, and that was nice to see them, um, just to have that Marvel cinematic tie-in. Um, yeah, 
all the scenes really hit well at all the European cities as well. The elementals were the so-called really cool. villain before, of course, Mysterio was revealed. Um, and uh, I, I wish it wasn't Hydro Man. I wish it was just like Water Dude or something because Hydro Man is a great character, but they kind of just, he's a wash, pun intended. Uh-huh. Anyways, um, so whatever, though. Um, let's get to Mysterio, back to him, though. Guys, he's not a sorcerer. He's not from an alternate universe. He's from here. And he's actually a tech wizard that created uh, holographic technology, which we saw. They referenced Civil War, that scene when Tony Stark uh, is having a flashback with his younger self and his parents, um, which Tony Stark apparently also uh, named it the acronym BARF. Yeah. Uh, and then it went along to fire Jake Gyllenhaal uh, amongst many other Stark employees. We saw one Stark employee from Iron Man 1 all the way back then with Jeff Bridges. Uh, and all these former uh, Stark employees that were fired and upset at the world uh, decided to come together and create the ultimate scheme to basically become the new <clears throat> Iron Man of the world uh, through using uh, holographic illusion technology, so say, and... Uh, making uh, Mysterio the hero of the world, but really, in all reality, creating these um, these illusions that actually make in, people in think... Order, in order to also... The, the main goal was to the full Iron uh, Spider-Man into giving up Edith. Yes. But 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 it, it, but the, they needed to give up Edith so they could have more control of the Stark drones right. to create the technology to create the illusions to make them heroes on a more global scale. Because in the movie they were doing it on smaller scales and they needed something bigger and grander than that. So really it was just about popularity, domination, stuff like that. But if they really came toe to toe with an actual scenario, they probably would be you know shit out of luck. Um, although the drones. The, the drones were pretty serious. The drones were cool, man. Yeah. The illusions were great. Um, my favorite part of the movie, I don't know about you, but my favorite part was the whole illusion sequence that Mysterio put Peter through. Sure, including zombie Iron Man. Zombie Iron Man. Holy crap, man. Like, I'm not six or seven, but if I was, I'd probably be scared. Uh, that was a, that was that whole that whole sequence was amazing. It it was great. It was like like real trippy, all over the place. You didn't know what was happen, uh, happening. Uh, the only thing I didn't understand is how, why didn't Peter's spider sense work? It wasn't working. Or the Peter tingle, you know. I think because uh, he was so traumatized by the death of uh, Iron Man that he kind of like lost it. Yeah, it's just it's not a really a plausible excuse to me, but sure, whatever, you know. Yes, yeah, it's, 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 that's I mean, a that's very that's a that's a very end game excuse. Yeah, it's very psych yeah. something psychological happened to him. Yeah, I will say this about about the um, the new Spider Man movies, Homecoming and Far From Home. I think both of them do a horrible job at showcasing the Spider Sense ability. Versus in Sam Raimi's uh, and Mark Webb, I think was the other one for Amazing Spider Man. I think they did a better job at at showcasing the Spider Sense abilities and how they work and how. Because that's such a that's such an integral part of Peter's power set, and we really haven't seen it. The closest we saw to it, in all honesty, was the hairs on Peter Peter's arm raising up in Infinity War. Mm -hmm. Like we really like that whole foresight as to what's happening. I think of Spider-Man Two when Doc Ock throws the car through the diner, and and Peter sees it happening, and and, and everything goes into slow mo. You know? Yeah, but maybe he's just developing. He's developing that that skill set, right? Like he doesn't really. Yeah, you're right. But at the very end of this movie is when his 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 spidey sense like turns on finally, and he uses it to great effect. But we, but even so, but we didn't see it. Like we yeah. just know he's dodging it because he's using his spider sense. But they're not doing a good job at visualizing the spider sense the same way the other movies did. I'm cool with that. I know you're cool with it. I'm cool with it too, but I would like to see it because it's such an important part of his power set. I'm so tired. Dude, dude, you're such a bitch right now. What time I'm did you go to? I'm really sleepy, dude. Dude, you're always sleepy. Oh my god, no, I'm really sleepy. You all every time, every time, guys, every time I call Juan when he's not here, it's like, hello. Uh, I'm, I'm always tired. I'm taking a nap. Uh, I can't fucking die fast. Uh, 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 uh. Wow, wow, wow. Anyways, um, so uh. Is that, is that everything we loved about this movie? We should have started with a list because maybe I would have been more hyper as as soon as we started talking shit to each other. No, fuck you, dude. Whatever. <laughs> we agree on this, so this is like super boring. We shouldn't even do it when we agree. But, 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 all right, so let's we talk. Should be, we should be like, we both love this movie, therefore we're not doing a review. The end. 
The end. The end. It's boring. Okay, well, we're real quick. Uh, let's talk about we're the. Just here loving everything. I mean, yeah, but it, that's that's a good thing for the movie. All right, but let's oh. talk. All right, let's talk about the cutscenes because those were pretty big. This movie was great. I I love I love seeing at the very end Mary Jane with Spider Man or MJ with Spider Man because in. We, we see Gwen Stacy with Spider-Man and Amazing Spider-Man, and they're swinging, life is beautiful. You know, uh, Mary Jane and, and Tobey Maguire Spider-Man swinging, life is wonderful. But in this movie, MJ's like, get me the fuck down! Like, that's more real, like, because you're swinging, like, there's nothing fun and glamorous about s swinging with him, you know? And I really enjoy that. But, guys, spoilers, at the end of the movie, we see J. Jonah Jameson. Played by, what's his name? Russell Simmons? J.K. Simmons. J.K. Simmons. Sorry, Russell Simmons. That'd be funny as fuck. Oh, uh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. It was a Simmons. I know that. <laughs> J.K. Simmons. And uh, who, if you guys don't know, was J. Jonah Jameson in the first Sam Raimi Spider-Man trilogy. Uh, so he came back. And it wasn't the... Bald. Bald. And it wasn't the Daily Bugle newspaper. It was more like... The Daily uh, Bugle. Infowars. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 It, was it, was like Info it was basically like that. And uh, so... Um, and, and basically, Mysterio's greatest last illusion or ploy was to reveal to the world that Spider-Man is Peter Parker. And that he's the one that was creating all the terrorism. And killed. And killed Mysterio. And Mysterio was actually the hero all along. So, this movie closes with Spider-Man being the villain, the menace, as J. Jonah Jameson would say. And, uh... Outed. And he's outed. Um, now, guys, if you don't know, in the comic books, Spider-Man uh, voluntarily outs himself in Civil War and becomes the Iron Spider. And uh, then he decides it's all fucked up, and he, he rebels against it, and he's a fugitive again. Civil War ends, and Doctor Strange, Sorcerer Supreme, decides to put a spell on everyone in the universe to make them forget that moment. And all of a sudden, Peter Parker... Uh, is has now has a secret identity once again. Do you think that's what they're gonna do here? Do you yes, think that? No, no, no. That they're gonna. I mean, the, I really want to see a Doctor Strange part two. So we could probably. We get are gonna because, see that because we know that Doctor Strange is off world according or unavailable according to Nick Fury in this movie. Yes. So it's okay for us to see that. Um. But this Spider-Man thing is going to have to be resolved sooner rather than later. Yes. So if they're going to make a movie with a fallout about it, and then at the end of that, because they're probably going to want to explore that, maybe bring in Craven the Hunter now that he knows it's Peter Parker. Maybe the third one is Craven the Hunter hunting down Peter Parker since he knows he's Spider-Man, right? See, but I think Craven, uh, as much as I love Craven the Hunter as a villain, I don't think he's a match for Spider-Man because he he doesn't have power set. I think the best interpret no, the best interpretation now. of Craven the Hunter was in the Ultimate Spider-Man, where basically like he made this big deal about hunting down Spider-Man, and Spider-Man took him out with one punch, you know? Because that's realistic. That makes sense to me. Mm. Craven's just whatever, you know. Well Uh, Give me like five minutes. Nah. Nah, that's mm. funny. So uh, I think Raven the Hunter would be, but the thing is, he's hunting Peter Parker. He can kidnap his family. Like, there's ways to do it. I mean, dude, Killmonger was pretty fucking awesome. Killmonger was great in Black Panther. But Killmonger at the, had the Black Panther powers, so he could go toe to toe with mm -hmm. T'Challa. You know? Yeah, Craven's gonna have to do. Maybe they could do so. Craven got some of them powers too. You know? I don't know. I, Either way, man. They, they, they've already said we're not going to get a Green Goblin. We're not going to get a Doc Ock as the villain. They so want throwing, they, they're gonna they want something Craven. we they're haven't have seen. Craven. E Either you think way, it's be Craven? It should be Craven. Either way, it knows because it, it's dealing with Peter Parker and his identity. Might as well make it a human. I mean, you don't want to. Could be like, Kingpin, Vincent D'Onofrio, De whatever his name is. Uh, well, I don't know if, if maybe. Be great. I don't know if Marvel would want to mix that in though. It'd be great. But so uh, they're going to have to resolve that sooner rather than later. I think. Look. It could be Spider-Man versus Venom. In all honesty, I, they need a result. I think like the Peter him being outed is going to be its own thing. Yeah, and someone hunting him down for being a criminal is going to be part of that story. Yeah. So for me, who better to get to try to hunt him down? It could be multiple people, but one of them is probably going to be Craven. We'll see, guys. We absolutely see, but it, it's going to be good either way. Um, I will say this: uh, after that cutscene, the final cutscene, which is normally the joke scene after joke. Uh, after all the credits, uh, I, it wasn't a it was joke a to me. It, it was the fact that. Guess By the way, real quick, on that first that first cutscene, one of the top three, easy for me. Cutscenes ever? Yeah. Oh yeah, no, really good, no, no. really good. Up there with like Nick Fury saying, "Let's like, talk about really, the Avengers." Initiative. Really nailed it. They made me want to watch the next movie. Right yes, away. I agree. 
I agree. And then they fucked it up. I know, and and we're not going to see another movie for like three years, guys. Yeah. So whatever. Um, final cut scene. It's where they fucked it all up. As amazing as this movie was, they fucked everything up. This made the movie like so sour to me. Basically, guys, Nick Fury, and Maria Hill, who were in the movie the entire time. Guess what, guys? Were spoilers. Scrawls, the shape shifting, not bad guys, but the political refugees seeking asylum. Uh, that are working for Nick Fury, who apparently is out in space, which I'm assuming has to do with the Kree Scroll War. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Captain Marvel's involved and all that crap like that. And we saw Talos, who was the main scroll guy from Captain Marvel, who played Nick F- who was impersonating Nick Fury, apparently. And of course, just like at the end of Captain Marvel, he was doofy and trying to be funny, and it's just a horrible representation of the Skrulls, and every time I think of the Skrulls in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, I just want to throw up in my mouth, and I hate Kevin Feige for it. So far, the only people that got the Skrulls right were, was Dark Phoenix. Dark Phoenix got the Skrulls right, guys. The Skrulls were horrible in Captain Marvel. They are horrible in Spider-Man Far From Home. They took an amazing movie, probably one of the top three Marvel Cinematic Universe movies ever, and dropped it by significant notches because of that last cutscene. Because basically, us seeing Nick Fury and Maria Hill throughout the entire movie was a fucking lie, number one. Number two, you put the scrolls which in is, it. Which, which, by the way, I'm not saying that them being scrolls ruins that whole thing. I'm saying that them being good comic relief ruins it, right? So if this was the beginning of Secret Invasion... This might have been my favorite Spider-Man, my favorite Marvel movie. If they were bad scrolls, if they were bad scrolls, oh. and we and nobody knows, and they didn't contact Nick Fury, we don't know what happened to Nick Fury, and it was the beginning of Secret Invasion, like the the next phase of Marvel would be Secret Invasion, and this is how they presented it to us. Agreed. If they were evil, if they if Talos turns around, he's like, let the invasion begin. Whatever. Agreed. Missed opportunities, guys. Best, Missed opportunities. Best Marvel movie. It, it would have been amazing. It really it would have. It would have blown my mind. I would have been like, fuck, they tricked me. I thought it was Nick Fury. The, the whole movie was Whoa. just an illusion. Yeah, the yeah. whole thing. Huh. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, but no. But the, no, Kevin the, Feige, fuck you. The Skrulls are still good guys that are apparently working for Nick Fury as as like his soldiers, and he's out in space, and Talos is posing as Nick Fury, and his wife is Maria and Hill. He, and he walks around, and, and he can't and, find his shoes. And he's, do good do good good shoes. I'm a Skrull. I just want a place to live. The Kree are evil. Captain Marvel is my god. They could have done so. Oh, I'm such a... I, I just want to be loved. <sighs> I will tell you this. The second time I watched the movies, I uh, I walked out before the second I was going to say, did you stay for that? The, no. Uh, I would have walked out, I too. walked out with my family. Yeah. I was like, oh, that's it. There was only one end credit scene left. Yeah. Don't ruin it for them. Nope. Yeah, good. I didn't. My son loves this movie. Good. Good. Well... There you guys go, guys. Uh, Spider-Man Far From Home. It's still in theaters right now. Uh, it's probably going to make a billion dollars. We're going to see a third one. Spider-Man will probably appear in other movies. There's going to be a Spider-Man vs. Venom. Uh, we'll see who the villain is going to be. Juan thinks it's Craven. I don't think it's going to be Craven though, but uh, I don't I would recommend watching in 3D. Um, there you guys go. You heard it there. Uh, 3D. Um, but we'll see. Um, anyways, uh, subscribe to our channel. Also, fucking Marissa Tomei. Jesus. No, she's great. That thing with Happy. Not, yeah, but her and Happy, that relationship. Happy that was, was great. That was super funny. Happy was awesome throughout the entire movie. That relationship movie. was actually really great. Yeah, it was great. It was great. Which, unfortunately, Happy thinks it's something more than it is. <laughs> 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 Which is typical. Right? Anyways. Poor Happy. Poor Happy. Happy ending. I know he does. Yeah. Anyways, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Like, comment, share all that fun stuff. Come see us at our three locations. We are located right here in Miami on 107th and 8th across from FIU. We have another location in Coral Gables on Lejeune just off US 1. And then our first location ever, which is in Pembroke Pines on Pines Boulevard, just East University. Uh, Spider-Man Far From Home in theaters now check it out we like you guys very much for all the love for tom pop featuring family and little boy my name is steven come on later